What happens when you mix Mickey, minifigures, and Marvel? Let's take a gander. Guys, if you like what I do here on Toy Gander, smash that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. I upload a new video every Wednesday and Saturday. So the set that I'm reviewing today is essentially if you were to take Disney characters and transform them into the world of Marvel. So let's go ahead and open up character number one. First up on the list is Captain America Mickey. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Why in the world will not just Mickey, but Captain America need a silenced Uzi? I don't know, but it came with it. And it's actually a pretty cool design. I just don't think it fixed the character. I like how that little silencer comes off, but we're going to take this off because I don't think it fits him. I think the idea behind this whole concept is pretty good. But the problem is that since these aren't official Lego pieces, so the painting is just seems off, the plastic seems a little bit cheap, and the overall design is a little bit lacking. The part that I do like, uh, besides this, this shield, I think the shield is pretty good, are the legs. And this is something that I wish Lego would do. They really need to get on board with these movable legs that go in different directions. All the Lego short legs are stationary and uh, honestly, I think the knockoffs do it better because they're movable. Other than that, um, I, they just copied the, the same printing on the torso. Same thing in the back. That's just a regular Captain America print. Nothing special about it. Minifig number two. This next fig is Donald Duck Spider-Man, as if you didn't already know that. Looking at this, some things that are a little bit questionable, look at this, like, floaty. He's included with a floaty, which is a take on the Batman, Lego Batman movie version floaty, which I, I do like. I like that it's included. It's just kind of like one of those little extra touches that it's appreciated. It's not, doesn't necessarily make sense, but I think it's kind of cool. They include the flippers on the bottom, and he includes spiders for whatever reason. Whatever reason, uh, not that Spider-Man ever uses spiders. He also includes this web shield. But uh, overall, decent printing. Same thing as with the Captain Mickey. Whoops, his arm came out. Uh, same thing as with the Captain Mickey. His torso print is the same thing as Spider-Man. There's nothing really unique about that. They use the exact same torso print, which makes sense because he's still a, a Spider-Man character. The only thing that's really custom on this is this floaty device and this um, Spider-Man head. Figure number three. So if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I've already reviewed a custom Duckpool version of the minifigure. This one actually does some things different that I do like. Now, the first thing that I will note is that he is missing a sword on this side. Other than that, he, he's included with the cutlass to kind of change it up a little bit. He also is included with this gun, which is a lot different than the one he normally carries. But some improvements over the original SDCC exclusive, he comes with these little side holsters which uh, act as like, um, you know, ammunition cases or something like that. But uh, it just adds to the, little, the depth of the character. He also is included with these fins on the bottom. And again, the part that I like are the movable bottom short legs, which the, the normal one, the SDCC one, is just brown and they are stationary. So it is a bit of an improvement. The printing on the head is not quite as good. It's a little bit sloppy towards the mouthpiece and you also get the hole in the top, which I think actually the original one might have as well. Looking at the back, I think it's the same thing. It's a, it's a regular Deadpool print, so nothing special actually on the, uh, the torso print, but decent overall design. Minifig number four. Wolverine Mickey creeps me out a bit, and I cannot get past those flesh tone arms. He just looks like an animal-human hybrid, and it, it, something about it just looks off. Besides those arms, the part that probably sticks out like a sore thumb is that weird eyebrow. The whole thing just reeks of weirdness, and the X's on his ears, I don't get it. He also has a Mickey 5 o'clock shadow, 
when in the world would you ever imagine you'd see Mickey with a five o'clock shadow? This, this character, and he's got like a smudge underneath his nose, like it's the start of a mustache, and his nose print is, is sloppily done. The whole thing kind of creeps me out. And the design choice to give him katanas on the back. Don't know what that's about because Wolverine definitely doesn't need katanas. And this thing like sticks together. It, it really is hard to get this one. In fact, I, I bent this sword putting it in. That's how difficult it is. Other than that, the only positive about it is the uh, short yellow legs that are movable. But beyond that, this thing is, is just bad. Minifig number five. Iron Man Donald Duck. Um, I I have to say, the first impression of this figure, it's kind of charming. You know, looking at the head, I like the head sculpt a lot. I like the design choices that they use to just keep the Donald Duck shape, but also take the painting, the really nice gold painting over it. It shows up pretty nice. It doesn't make much sense anatomically, but I like the look. It really does capture the Iron Man look in Donald Duck form. Uh, the bizarre choice to give him these plasma flippers. It's kind of, kind of a weird one. My only real gripe with this figure is that the legs don't match. If they would have given him the gold paint scheme on these legs, I think it would have nailed it. Or what I really would like to see is the chrome version of this. Give them all chrome and I think that would really take this figure to the next level. But so far this might be one of my favorite ones within this. Minifig number six. Oh boy, you guys are in for a doozy on this one. Um, just when I thought there was a slight improvement with the Iron Man, Donald Duck, this one shows up. This clearly is a take on Hulk, but, uh, oh man, oh. <laughs> They are so far from a good product here that I, I, it's, there's nothing savable really. The part that I see that really everyone has to ask themselves, what is going on with the bottom half of Mickey? Now either this is the same flesh tone color and Mickey is standing there completely nude or they're green pants. I'll leave that up to the, the viewer on what you want to say they are. The eyebrow, what in the world? Now, let's just compare, look at look at these two. It's not like he, okay, they just maybe had a bad paint setup or something because these are completely different eyebrows that are wrong. He has half an eyebrow on this side and half an eyebrow on this side. It doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. He has a purple nose, which Hulk clearly doesn't have a purple nose. His face is yellow. And this green painted is just splotted, splotted on there. He has a flask in one hand, a chain in the other. He comes with these two wrenches. The overall thing just smacks of zero effort. Next minifig. You know, originally I wanted to like these figures. I thought, what a cool concept. And as I continue to open these, I'm just realizing there are so many bad qualities about them. And I kind of knew when I when I saw them online, I knew they were going to be bad, but I wanted to like them. Thor, Donald Duck. Uh, yeah, this thing's, this thing's bad. He includes two hammers, though. Hey, two hammers. Flesh-toned head. Cape that kind of flies out there like that. Oh, but hey, he has these holsters. And silver flippers. Yay! Will this be the one that saves them all? Let's find out. If you guys were wondering if this would be the saving grace of these figures, you are going to be sadly disappointed. You know, the part that they nail, and I have to give them credit for, is at least they got the torso right, they got the legs right, they got the arms right. But the part that matters the most, because you can really use any one of these things, is the head. And uh, I don't know if you see the fading widow's peak at the top of his head, his yellow face, or those confusing bat symbols on his ears. This thing is just, uh, it's a far cry from legit. They use this weird cape that only has, uh, I've seen these a couple times, 
but it, it only has one hole so it doesn't sit right it just kind of flies right out there like in an action pose and it lo ends up looking ridiculous the only way that that cape actually works is if you have a cowl that goes over the whole piece which pushes it down in this case it just totally doesn't work he includes a bat that's kind of decent quality but uh, other than that this these are a failure. Wow, guys, I am sorry that these were such a disappointment. And it just kind of goes to show you how bad those Chinese knockoffs can be. But uh, definitely share this video with a friend to just show them how bad some of these knockoffs are out in the world. So that's what I have for today. Until next time, you can help us take a gander. Wait, 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 before you click away, why don't you click one of these other Toy Gander videos? If you like this one, you're definitely gonna like these. And don't forget to subscribe because I upload twice a week, one on Wednesday, one on Saturdays, and you don't wanna miss out on what I upload next.